let's go ahead and take a look at how to program our clock or timer in order to have our project 1.8 build a body have a countdown from 30 seconds. So one of the first things we're going to need to do is add a non-visible component to our app. And that non-visible component is going to be our clock feature. In order to do that, we're going to go ahead and select from our palette the sensor drawer. And in that sensor drawer, we're going to go ahead and select the clock and drop it onto our canvas. Now you will notice that once you drop that onto your canvas, that it will not actually be displayed on the app itself, but rather down below listed as a non-visible component. Once we go ahead and click on that non-visible component, we can take a look and see what the properties are set to. What we want to make sure we do is we are going to uncheck this timer enabled. We want to be able to use our start button in order to trigger that clock to start, not when the actual app initializes. So therefore, we're going to go ahead and select that and make sure it is unchecked. You will also want to make sure that your intervals is set to 1000 milliseconds. So basically what we're going to do is every 1000 milliseconds, we're going to subtract one from our countdown timer and then we're going to have a display that shows us that running clock. Once we have that non-visible component listed, we can then go ahead and take a look at our block view. What our main goal for this is to basically use the clock event handler to get there to be a countdown from 30 seconds. When the timer reaches zero, we want the canvas itself to become invisible so we can no longer interact with it. And we also need the timer to stop and all the organ systems that are placed in the correct location should also stop that timer as well. We will then go ahead and program the start and reset buttons to either enable or disable that timer as well. So we're going to go ahead and find a blank spot on our palette here where we can go ahead and start to program our clock. So doing that, we're going to go ahead and scroll down in our block view and find the clock. And we're going to go ahead and select when clock timer. Now that we have that ready to go, we can start to manipulate that code in order to get it to do what we want. So one of the first things that we are going to actually look at here is how we can display our time. In order to do that, we're going to need to both utilize our variable, which is called time left, as well as the timer label in order to display that. So one of the first things I want to go ahead and do is grab my variable and we're going to go ahead and set my variable, which is going to be listed as time left to take my global time left and subtract one from it. So in order to do that, I'm going to grab my math drawer, grab a subtraction block. We'll go back to variables and we're going to go ahead and get whatever that time left variable is at the current time. From there, we'll go to our math drawer and we're going to go ahead and subtract one. Now, as mentioned before, remember, just because you are manipulating your variable, it doesn't mean that it's actually going to display on the label. So in order to get it to display on the label, we're going to have to go and find that timer label. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we set that text to get that variable itself. So go ahead and find your timer variable or timer label and we're going to go ahead and set that text and using a join block we're going to go ahead and join two pieces of information the first part that we're going to go ahead and join is the name itself which is going to be timer so we can go ahead and type that in timer with your colon and make sure you add a space after you add that space we're going to go to our variables and we're going to go ahead and get that time now what that will do is it's going gonna, it's gonna to set my variable to subtract one every 1000 milliseconds and my timer label is going to display that as well. Now the next part of this is where we're going to use a condition and in our condition we're going to be using an if then else if statement. So basically we're going to have two separate conditions with two possible outcomes here. So in order to do this I'm going to grab my control and then I'm going to go ahead and grab this if then else if else. Now we're not going to actually use that bottom else statement, so we're going to use the mutator tab and we're going to go ahead and take that else statement and drag it off to the left. Click the mutator tab again and we will be left with our if then else if statement. So from there we're going to look at our first condition. My first condition basically is going to state that if the time equals zero, we want to basically stop that timer by making it timer enabled to false 
and we're also going to turn that canvas off as well. So we're going to go ahead and in this case we're going to grab an equal sign. And with that equal sign we're going to go ahead and say if my timer variable, which is my time left, is equal to zero, then what we want to be able to do is make that timer enabled set to false. So I'm going to need to go to my clock and we're going to scroll down to the bottom until we see that enabled. And once we see that timer enabled, we can go ahead and drop it in the then statement. We're going to go ahead up to our logic and we're going to make that false, which means no longer can my timer actually run. Once we have that condition, the last part of this if statement is to turn my canvas invisible. And we're going to do that by selecting my canvas and scrolling all the way down to the bottom until we see set canvas to visible. Once we have that set canvas to visible, we're going to go ahead and set that to false as well. So I'm just going to duplicate that false statement and place it right in there. Now for my second condition, which is going to be my else if, this can get a little tricky to do, but basically we're going to create multiple and statements to basically say, if all of my organ systems are present, then we're going to go ahead and set the clock to false as well. So we're going to actually go ahead and duplicate that clock one timer enabled to false and drop it in the then. So now we have to look at what our condition is going to look like. So in order to do this, we're going to be mainly focusing on these placements here. So remember before when we took the brain and we basically said if the brain collides with the brain placement, we're going to make that brain placement false. So we can take a look in this touch up statement here and we're going to see that when we collide the digestive system with the digestive system placement, we're going to go ahead and basically say the digestive system placement is now false. We no longer can see it. We're going to use that statement to help us here in order to stop the clock. So in order to do this, I need to grab multiple AND statements. And we're going to actually need three of these. So I'm going to go into my logic and I'm going to find my AND statement. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that twice. Now as mentioned, these can get a little tricky to put that information in. So we're going to go in nice and slow so that you can see what we're going to be doing. The next thing I'm going to need to grab are a couple equal signs. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my equal signs and in this case, I believe I'm going to need to add four of these. So I'm going to bring all four of them in. And then from there we can go ahead and start adding the pieces that we need. The first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we want to basically say if the brain placement visible is set to false. So I'm going to grab my brain placement. I'm going to look for that visible. And I'm going to go ahead and say if the brain placement visible is equal to false. So now that I have that there, I'm going to go ahead and grab a logic statement and I'm going to bring in that false. I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing with all of my other placements. So I'm going to duplicate that brain placement and I'm going to go ahead and change that now to my digestive system placement. And I can go ahead and duplicate that false and drop that in there as well. So again, take my digestive system, I can duplicate that one. And I'm going to go ahead and change that guy down to my respiratory system placement. And we'll go ahead and drop another false in there as well. We'll drop that second false in the first one as well. So the last one we should need here is going to be my urinary system. So in order to get that, we're going to go ahead and duplicate that guy, drop him in. And let's go ahead and change him to urinary system placement. So now I have four separate conditions here or logic statements that are basically comparing the urinary system or any of the placements on whether or not they are visible. So for the first part of this, I'm going to take my brain placement and I'm going to drop it into the front half of that and statement. So right now I'm saying if the brain placement visible is false and Let's take my digestive system and I'm going to drop that guy into the first half of another AND statement. Now I'm going to take that entire AND statement and drop that into the first half or the second half of my AND. So basically what we're looking at here is if the brain placement and the digestive system placement are invisible, then my clock should stop. But we need to go ahead and add the respiratory system and urinary system as well. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and join the respiratory system and urinary system to that second AND block, and we could drop that whole part into the back half. Now this is where it can get a little bit long, but now we're basically looking at here, and we're saying if the brain, digestive, respiratory, or urinary system placement are all invisible, then we can set our clock to false. So we're going to take that big long statement there and drop that into my else if statement. Now that's pretty much all we need to do for my clock event handler, but we still need to be able to have a way to turn this on or off. So in order to do this, we do need to look at both the start button as well as the reset button. So let's go take a look at my start button first. And with my start button, we only need to add one or two things here. Basically, we need a way that when that start button is clicked, that that clock does become true now. It is now enabled. So we're going to go ahead down to my clock, and we're going to find that enabled. And once we find that enabled, we're simply going to go ahead and drop that guy in there. And we're going to set that to a true statement as well. Because remember, in the beginning, we went ahead and unchecked that it was enabled when the app initializes. Now, when we click the start button, that clock is going to begin running. So now that we have our clock running, now we need to go ahead and look at what happens when the game ends. And that is going to be handled here in our reset button. So there are those just a few things we have to add to this. So let's go ahead and take a look at what those items are that we're going to go ahead and add to our reset button. First thing we need to do is basically reset my timer or the variable and the timer label back to its original state. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is let's go ahead and focus on that variable for right now. We're going to go ahead and set my time left. And we want to make sure that my time left is set back to 30 seconds. The second thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is adjust that timer label so that it reflects what the variable is actually reading. So we can go ahead and set that timer label. And again, we're going to go ahead and join using our text boxes. We can bring in that join and we're going to bring in another text box here and we're going to go ahead and say timer. And we're going to add a colon with a space and we're going to go ahead and get that time left. Now that we have our label set as well as the actual variable, we need to go ahead and make sure my canvas can now be seen because we did make it invisible. So we're going to go ahead and set the canvas visible. And in this case, instead of making it false, we're going to go ahead and make it true. So now we can go ahead and utilize that canvas again. Last but not least, we need to go down to our clock and we're going to also turn that clock off so that it can no longer run until we hit the start button. So we're going to do that by basically going ahead and setting our clock timer enable and we're going to set that guy to false. Now that pretty much sums up the coding portion of your actual app as far as the clock goes. But let's take a look and see just exactly what is going to happen on our app when we go ahead and utilize that. So the first thing you will know is we do have our timer and when I hit the start button that timer will start counting down. Now, if I do put all of my organ systems in the correct locations, you're going to notice that that timer should stop. Once that timer does stop, notice that we cannot move anything else. But what we're basically going to go ahead and do now is going to go ahead and select that reset button. Now, again, if I go ahead and hit the start button and we let this guy run down, the last thing that you're going to really see is that once all those organ systems are not in the correct location, and that timer does run out, our canvas should actually disappear, which means the only thing we're going to be really left with is that score, the timer, the start, and the reset button as well. Now in the next tutorial, we will go ahead and add the solution button, but for right now, you're going to see that we get down to that number zero. My canvas should disappear. We have nothing left to do. We can't do anything unless we go ahead and hit the reset button, and it sets everything back to its original state. So there you have on how to use the clock in order to create a timer in your app.